Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why you should learn React. React basically won the war when it comes to what client-side framework you should use. And really like, you can do the full stack now with React. Um, when React first came out in 2013, I jumped on it pretty quickly because I was coming from Knockout. I was doing a lot of Knockout work. I mean, I go back, uh, jQuery before that. And um, I was looking for something, something better than you know, what Knockout was providing. And when React came along, and I was messing around with some Angular too back in 2014, uh, but I found it to be complicated, especially trying to integrate like Angular with, with Django. Um, I have tutorials on there from like 2014. Anyway, it wasn't a good experience. I, I didn't feel like it was a very good developer experience. When I learned about React, I was like, wow, I really like the approach of just dealing with the view. I want, you know, the, just because for the most part, when I'm building UIs, I'm only caring about the view. I don't really want to have to deal with all of its routing and uh, single page application type stuff, the bi-directional data flow that Angular was using at the time. React's unidirectional data flow was much easier to wrap my head around. The components just seemed to work. JSX I thought was an ugly nightmare at first when um, I realized that we were trying to take JavaScript and intertwine it with HTML. I was like, what the hell is this stuff? And I picked it up the first time and I threw it away. I was like, ah, I can't get on board with the JSX. And when I first started React, actually, I was doing all my React without going the JSX route because it was like, oh, you could just write it all in JavaScript. And then, you know, I'm like, well, this is getting too convoluted. So I try JSX again, and then I hated it again, threw it away. And then eventually the third time I tried JSX, I was like, oh, this, this really does make sense. So it's sort of an uglier way of writing my HTML and my web components, but it makes a lot of sense once I started learning how to use it. Um, so... That said, when React started getting traction in like 2014 or maybe 2015, Angular 1 was still around. So Angular 1 was still called Angular JS, And people were complaining about it all the time, found it confusing. Getting started was relatively easy. And then once you started building anything complicated, which is what most projects turn out to be, uh, Angular started falling on its face and just wasn't a very friendly developer experience, in my opinion, compared to React. Now, Angular was trying to do a whole lot more than React, but uh, Angular's team ended up quickly switching their focus and they wrote Angular 2, they used TypeScript, they deprecated version 1 at 1 1.3 and it really pissed off a lot of the community because a lot of businesses and things had invested millions of dollars in Angular at that point uh, only to find out that they were com completely redo the way that they were doing things. Um, so now that we fast forward into 2022, I've been doing React now every day for, I think, six or seven years. I don't know the exact time frame, but for as long as I can really remember, um, coming from Python, integrating my Python websites with React, uh, eventually getting a job in React, uh, doing you know, C Sharp. So I was doing a lot of C Sharp UI stuff in React and continue to do that and then sort of transitioned over into Node and all that. Uh, the point being, though, is React has always stuck around. And the React way of doing things with its component architecture it was just a lot easier to work with. So in 2022, this uh, great GitHub article here has a lot of stats on why React has won when it comes to the framework war. So what are some of the other frameworks that we're comparing to? It would be Angular, Vue, and Svelte is like the new kid on the block uh, that some people are saying that you know it has a lot of potential. But really, like we're just simply rewriting what we already have. We're reinventing the wheel. Uh, in my opinion, long story short, is that we all need to kind of, you know, just make React better, make it a better ecosystem. And we're doing that. We have tools like MUI. MUI will give you all the UI components that you need without having to write a bunch of crap. Uh, like, you know, everything from these slider controls, date pickers, things that we used to have to really re rely on, like jQuery and a bunch of plugins in order to be able to do uh, watermarking. Uh, all, you know, the, the, the list goes on and on. But um, the components and tools are getting better. We have extensions that work inside the browser uh, that allow us to debug our React code much more easily. So we have this, um, you know, we, Redux for state management. There's a lot of tools that React now taps into in order to make your website. But the bottom line, though, is that the way the way that React has actually taken the client side approach, it's won the war. So here's Stack Overflow trends. You can clearly see that React is ahead of everybody else. Um, you can also see that Angular is on the decline and no, this isn't Angular JS. That clearly died a long time ago. This is Angular that's on the decline. Um, so we look at the popularity here. So React now has 40% of the popularity of all these uh, different frameworks. 
and Spelt is not even close. So I know a lot of people say Spelt is really, really performant, but from what I understand that once you start getting into really complicated states uh, and complicated UIs, that Spelt's performance starts to decline a little bit. My point though is that like, why do we have to completely reinvent the wheel here? Uh, React has won. We probably need to just simply make React better, make the tools better. I do think the React is a little bit convoluted. Um, the, some of the ecosystems that we have nowadays and like the way that we write components and the component CSS, it can look really ugly and confusing and it's probably all, not all that beginner friendly for new programmers. But if I were gonna pick a framework and say, okay, you wanna get a job in web development, I, React is definitely my recommendation here because I've, been manage, I've managed to stay employed using React for the longest time now and I feel like it's not gonna change anytime soon in the next you know, several years. It is impossible to say, though, like exactly where the web development world is going to be. Maybe something better comes along. Maybe we do away with browsers somehow and do something else. I mean, I mean, we're all still relying upon HTTP. It's the backbone of the Internet. So it seems like browsers are here to stay. And whether it's WebAssembly uh, or something else, like it still seems like we're going to be writing our UIs in a way that people know how to write them. And these days, it's, it's the React way. Um, so some of these other... Uh, uh, articles here, you can see like NPM downloads completely crushes the competition uh, as far as React is concerned. MP NPM packages that are depending on React are way higher than uh, both Vue and Angular here. GitHub used by React is crushing it. And by the way, this, uh, this I should give credit to this article, but whoever made this, uh, this guy here from Paris, France, Tang, Tangai Krotov. Anyway, um, all right, so moving down this list, let's continue to look at some of this stuff here. Um, Reddit, you can see that there's a lot more conversations about React on Reddit, on Twitter. Hacker News hiring trends. Now, this is something also, so he does have Indeed mentioned, uh, but Indeed has something like, when I just checked it tonight, it, it's, it's approximately three times the amount of jobs as Angular, which is the second closest so Hacker News hiring trends, I'm not sure how accurate that is compared to Indeed, but um, developer tools here, React wins in pretty much all of these competitions. So even Google Trends. I think that what we need to do moving forward is we need to continue to rely on some of these tools and probably frameworks. We need something better than Create React App. Now Create React App is a decent project, but I find that it is, uh, the biggest problem with Create React App is that it's just hiding so much configuration, and when you do want to override and do your own thing, yeah, you can inject it, but inject it and then tell me how easy it is to understand all that, especially for any beginner developer. There's a lot of opinionation in there, so I have tutorials on how to get React up and running from the ground up, like with, React, uh, with Webpack and um, your own plugins and uh, th there's a lot that, that's on my website about how to do that yourself, but Create React App is basically doing that for you. Uh, but you do sort of lock into a lot of ways, uh, opinionated ways, which I think is probably not the best direction. I do think we need like more clear-cut, bare-bones implementations of React projects, which is why I actually created another one years ago. So this is something I created a long time ago. It was just like the most bare bones implementation of how to get React up and running with what you needed. I haven't updated it in years though. It really needs to be updated. Not saying I recommend it, but I am recommending that we need better tools like this to be not so bloated, but have just a bare implementation of what we're trying to go for. Um, we also have things like when it comes to state management. Now React state management is obviously not the best. So that's why we have tools like Redux and that adds a lot of complexity to your project. Um, React is also just simply the view still. So we have projects like React Router, which is used for single page applications. Um, now, yeah, there, there's quite a bit to learn and, and take in there, but it seems like the better direction for web development is that we pick a direction and we go with it. And at this point, the community has picked the React direction. So why do we continue to have to have fragmentation arguments and I'm not trying to say that like we should always have just one solution for something, but when it comes to web development and UIs, I would like to see technology move into a direction where we're doing new things instead of reinventing the same old wheel. Um, like augmented reality, virtual reality, those things have impressed me. The mobile uh, smartphones, that, that was obviously a big trend. HTML itself, the internet. Um, what is the next direction gonna be? Like if we're gonna continue to make websites, let's make the experience better 
not not to fight over like rounded corners and all that stuff. I'm talking about overall experience. Let's build better ways of, of displaying data, manipulating data, showing data, uh, which is the same thing as displaying. Uh, the point being, though, is that we could make our world a better place if we didn't fight over so many stupid things like Angular is better than Vue and Vue is better than React and all this stuff. It's like, who cares? React is clearly the winner when it comes to what are the companies using, what are the, the developers preferring. We are making um, improvements. Like React itself used to have a class-based system, and now we have functional components in React. Uh, we're using things like uh, hooks for firing off events, and um, now we're sort of moving into like single page uh, apps, obviously, like which is not new, but um, now we have what are called like, uh, you, I had a video on federated modules, so multiple apps combined into one app, that's sort of a direction that we're headed into. At the very least, we're breaking into a new era where uh, we have a bunch of different components and that you should be able to uh, update a website iteratively, we talk about CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous development. How do you do that? You, you avoid the monolith systems. So what is a good way to avoid monolith systems on UI? It's to have your individual UI components that are reusable, shareable, distribute them, distribute them throughout your team, install them through a package manager, something like JFrog or NPM, uh, and, and you can then take those in as you need them, you know, version them, document them, make them better over time, but avoid the monolith system so that we can build faster and quicker. I mean, that's the direction of everything. And we're not there yet. It seems like as React has, has grown and with its like adoption, we do have a lot of fragmentation on, as far as like so many different tools to do what we need a, a modern day website to do. But the tools are there and they are getting better. React now runs on the server side as well. So there's something called server side rendering. Uh, isomorphic JavaScript is really the term for it. But it's the fact that you can build HTML that is being rendered by your server. You can build it in the same component libraries. So you could share components that are used on the UI also on server side development. So server side meaning uh, server side render, meaning that it's better for uh, search engines to be able to parse and read your website. It doesn't have to understand so much JavaScript or wait for a bunch of Ajax calls for initial data that you know that you're going to need. So Next.js is a popular framework that's solving a lot of those problems. Now, one might argue like, well, why the hell do we have to solve this problem? You know, this shouldn't be a problem that we have to solve, but uh, it, it really is. But Next is a really popular framework that is solving that. When it comes to actually creating these reusable components, it's much easier these days to test. Like Jest is a very uh, modern project. Now I know it works with a lot of these other lang or frameworks, but um, it was initially created by Facebook's team to test their React components. In addition, you have first-class support for debugging React these days. You can do it in Visual Studio Code, which is free. You can do it with a paid editor like WebStorm. When it comes to TypeScript, we can write our React apps both on the server side and the client side using TypeScript. So if you want type safety, the list goes on and on. Now, some people will say, okay, well, you could do some of this stuff with Angular or Vue. My point is, is that React won. If you're learning the code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast to the point without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.